You got here just in time. And you're actually giving a demonstration. I am, and we just started. So I've got 13 minutes, basically, to get from the one half minute point to the end. And I want the last minute and a half to be the burn world. But that changes with the beam, it changes with the altitude, it changes with the machine, it changes out they're cold and they go into the roaster. And when they bottom out, they absorb the energy that they're going to absorb, the machine stabilizes, and all of a sudden you reach a stasis point, and then the, it begins to, to climb. Well, the idea is to climb and end in 14 and a half minutes. Well, that's pretty easy to recreate, but the problem with that is, is that you can climb there, but also burn the beam in there. If I shoot the trajectory too high, the beam's going to cook on the outside and get green on the inside. It's going to taste horrible, bitter, and green. If I shoot the trajectory too low and go past the 14 and a half minutes, it tastes baked. So if you've ever had a cup of coffee that tastes just horrible, I mean just bleh. Just bitter? Green, bitter, doesn't profound flavors, you're going, it's probably been baked. And most roasters err on the side of baking. So this is a drum, and it's turning. Unlike the air roasters that some people use, this is a very traditional roaster. It's a drum. It has two knives in it. And the knives create a double helix, and the beans go forward and they go back. They go forward and they go back. So in the very beginning, what we're doing is we're adding contact heat, like frying an egg, because we want to throw as much energy as we can into that bean to get it going. And look at these beans. You can December of this year, and they were processed on our farm. But you can get an idea of how small and very dense they are. Um, this is the way the world markets. This is the way coffee's traded in the world market, in these green beans. So when we throw these in, to get them to actually start cooking, we have to put a lot of energy on them. But the problem with putting a lot of energy on them is, is that once they start cooking and they don't need as much energy, they cook from the outside, and so you're receiving energy from the outside in and the inside out. And all of a sudden, you have a Molotov cocktail that wants to explode on you like that. So we have to use air. We have to use air. Use air to 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 adjust that or play with that. So this machine has an air control on it. Right now, about 100% of the air is going through and bypassing the bin, the actual the cooking area, because we want to use contact heat. But as the bean begins to cook, we'll start adding more air, 50% at one point, and then full air at the other point. Because when the bean actually goes into the train wreck, you want to pull as much energy as you, I mean, air across as you can. So that the, the so that the, the it doesn't burn it doesn't burn one. Now this is a this is a, a bean sensor. It's actually not testing the air. It's actually a sensor on the inside of the machine that's touching the bean. And so we're actually getting a very accurate idea of what's happening in the machine, which a lot of roasters don't have because they are testing the air that's coming off the back of the machine. But right now this machine was thinking that the beans were at 460, but there were no beans in there. So now it's trying to find that stasis point. It's trying to find the, the point in which the beans have accepted the energy and they've stabilized at their temperature. That's the real temperature and they move up. That point is a minute and a half. And that's a constant anywhere in the roasting world, no matter where you are. When I learned to roast, I went to Sandpoint, Idaho to the place where this machine's built to roasting class. And I was roasting Sumatra beans at about 2,000 feet below where we are right now. So when I came to Costa Rica, I thought I knew all about roasting. Well, for about two weeks, all I did was bake beans. Bake them, bake them, bake them. Because I could never get the energy that I needed. And then I woke up one day and said, well, wait a minute. We're 2,000 feet up. I'm going to have to run the temperature up on this machine. But I ran it all the way up to the top, and it almost didn't get the beans to bottom out. And so I was crying, really, really worried that my machine wasn't going to work at this level. But ultimately, it did. So now look at this right here. We're at a minute, 25, 26, 8, 9, 30. And we bottom out exactly at 189. When you say bottom out, what do you mean? That means that the, now the temperature is not going to go below at that point. Okay. And now we're climbing from, from uh -huh. 189. And we're going to go all the way back up to 434 degrees Fahrenheit. But in roasting, you got to have an anchor point. There's not many constants in roasting at all. Science of roasting and, and kind of how the temperature over time works, then it's all about cupping. It's all about cupping. The smell, something. Yeah. Nice segue. That's oh. a nice segue. <laughs> because what we did is now, so here's where we are. 
<laughs> now, we're very, very early in the roast. This is going to be about 290. Not much happens. This is the first 12 and a half minutes. Okay, that's all that is. The last two minutes is when, when it actually happens, when it becomes coffee. So right now, what we're doing is the foundational part of the roast. So what you're going to smell at 290 is this wonderful chocolate chip cookie smell. And what is going on? Well, what's going on is that's when all the sugars are caramelized. Coffee is full of sugar. That's what makes coffee coffee. It's very, very similar to wine. In fact, that the balance of the sugars in the bean are what make coffee coffee. I was gonna get him confused. Different, huh? I'm on the second. Whoa. The difference between the Whoa. difference between the second and the third one is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. The smoke is starting to come out the back, and you'll also see some paper coming out of the back. A little chaff. The chaff is this right here. This is this especially um, is is to allow the husk to draw on the bean and then dry mill it afterwards. Costa Rica is traditionally a very, very clean palate coffee, very, very washed coffee. All right, so who wants to lift it up? You want to lift it up for me? Okay. At 435, lift this up for me. What do you mean by this? That big handle right there. Go ahead. Oh, wow. All right, so now we're exactly on profile. We're four, four minutes, 15, 14 minutes, 15 seconds. Mm. You like the smell of it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like we'll drop it down. There we are. We're going to turn the heat off for a minute. Mm. So, yeah, it's popping. It's still going. Look so it came out as a medium oh roast, and now we're actually allowing it to cook in the bin. Oh, yeah. And we're moving it, moving it, moving it towards dark a little bit. Look at the in the movie. Yeah. What temperature will the beans end up at? 460 or somewhere below? Mm -hmm. They're probably, they're probably, no, they probably stayed the same way oh, they, they were. The same. Because they're not getting, accepting any more heat. They're, not, they're, they're, they're actually So, but your energy. temperature is still going. So the machine is now sensing that, that the machine actually has its own inertial energy. It wants to stand back up. And I just turned the gas off. Oh, okay. But now these parts are, that in there is all dark. About here. Well, it's because of the light. Mm -hmm. We'll turn it on. We'll do this for me. Pull this right here. I'm not on the <laughs> Pull this to cooling bay. Pull it all the way forward. Yep. And then turn this on. This here? Right here. here. Mm -hmm. On. There we go. Oh. Oh. Now, so now what's happening is we've taken all the air back from the drum and we're pushing it down or pulling it through the beans and we're actually cooling the beans down. And all this smoke you see yeah. is coming from the beans. Okay. This is the brakes. This is the, the only way to stop a roast. Yeah, you can cool. hear it. You can hear it not pop so much now. Yeah. Mm. That's a roast. That's a medium dark roast. Wow. Yeah. And so then what do you do? You put this in bags and sell it? Absolutely. Can you we do. buy some of that? Absolutely. Alright, I want to buy some of that. And